Hey everybody, Andy. Community Appreciation Week rolls on hump day number three. Great to have you with me. Always starting these a few minutes early because I want to share some stories with you from people in the Mile Walk Academy. They look just like you. Different skin, same problems. And uh, they're sharing their stories. Today we've got some uh, little selfie videos for you to warm up the show. We're going to be talking finances today, which I absolutely love. I don't think I've ever given this talk this way and called out things to this level of detail, but we're going to talk about your compensation packages. So get in the chat. If you're with me, say hi. You know the drill. I'm going to run the reel. I'm going to go make me my tea and I'll be right back. <laughs> Let me see where they are. Here we go. Hi, friends. My name is Connie and I have known Andy for I think just over a year. I found him when I was uh, looking for a new job while still being employed, thankfully. And I uh, just wanted to say that one of the things that I love about working with Andy is he is real. Uh, from the very first web webinar, web session that I watched with him, um, I could tell he called out people's names and you know little things about them. And so I knew and could see just from the screen his passion for the people that he helps. And today um, was one of his um, customer appreciation or client appreciation sessions. And I asked my question and he knew me well enough and yet shared something that seems really simple, um, but just to do it, not to be perfection and um, to just get it done. Um, after the session, I took a little walk around the parking lot, uh, got some sunshine, some fresh air, and I know what my next step is, and I'll be implementing that in about 20 minutes uh, when I have my next meeting. So I am truly thankful for Andy, uh, Kara, My Walk Academy, all the stuff that he gives us, um, especially his time and attention, and that super awesome personal touch with lots of energy. Thanks for listening. Bye. Hi everyone, this is Denise. I joined Andy's bootcamp about eight months ago and right now I'm sitting in the office of the job that I got because of it, making way more money than I'd expected because Andy gave me the confidence to ask for more money and I just wanted to say that job hunting is awful and Andy makes it way easier and even enjoyable at times. So if you're like me and don't really buy anything for yourself, this one is worth it. Watching Andy's content has really inspired me to really find great companies to work for. Searching for a great company to work for instead of just finding a job. Andy has really changed my mindset and how I approach job interviews, which has provided me with more confidence going into one. His interview intervention book is an amazing read, full of knowledge on how to prepare and answer questions. I would highly recommend reading this book. Hi, my name is Johnny Stevens. When I realized I was going to have to look for work after nearly 18 years at my employer, I was terrified. I did the best I could, putting together a resume, uh, getting information out on LinkedIn, trying to rally my resources, and I spent 80 days in frustration with very few leads and even fewer interviews and a whole lot of no's or silence. And when I met Andrew LaCivita uh, on YouTube and started watching his content, my whole dynamic changed, my resume changed, my interviewing style changed, my focus changed. Uh, in those last 19 days of my 99 day search, I had four interviews and got two offers in the same week. And not only was I confident in the positions and in, in what I brought to the table and what they brought to my table, but I was able to negotiate successfully based on Andy's uh, input and information. I could not recommend Andrew LaCivita any higher the, the guy's a pro and it will rock your world to just take the communication principles he puts in place and apply them to your job search. Go and become everything you were meant to be. Andy, I am happy to tell you that after five interviews, I got my dream job. I've never been so well prepared for an interview in my life, let alone five. And with your training and your guidance and excitement, I did it. Thank you to everyone. I totally recommend Andy Lasavita's training. It is the best, and he does it because he cares. Thank you. 
Hey Andy, it's Kat. I'm so excited I start my brand new job on Thursday. And before I did that, I just wanted to say thank you so much for everything that you did for me. With your program, there's a couple of important things that happened. Number one, being unemployed was tolerable. It was manageable. It was something that I could get through. It's hard to be unemployed. But when I had your program, I had things to do every day. They were constructive things. They were the right activities with the right words that were sending me down the right path that was actually gonna result in me getting a job. So that was awesome to have the support of your community and things to have on my calendar. I did the 14-day four, the 14 challenge. Um, I did it pretty scrappy to, though and worked on your interview techniques and and before I even had a chance to rewrite my whole resume, but just using those techniques, I gotta tell you, that was all it took for me to get a job. Now the job that I got, Andy, I can't even believe what I'm gonna be doing. I gotta be, I'm doing my dream job exactly what I want. I'm making almost twice as much money as I was making at my past job. And not only that, Andy, but I'm also making about 20 to 25% more than what I thought I would be making with this career move. So that totally blew past my expectations. And that was fantastic. But also, um, I mean, it went, it went pretty fast. It went faster than I thought it was going to be. Like I said, I didn't even get into everything of your program. But that's cool, because now I get to turn the page and you're still there for me because I'm totally looking forward to getting into your career accelerator stuff so that I can be a hero and get promoted super fast and get all kinds of great skills on focus, on organization, on motivation. I'm just looking for, this is just the first step in this whole big journey, my friend. I'm so glad to be with you on it and glad to be a part of your community. If anybody's doubting whether or not they should be part of your community, they're, they're, just don't even think about it. Make the decision, make it early. Don't mess around looking at all the free stuff and trying to be all thrifty about it because you're unemployed. When you do the boot camp, you're gonna get a job faster. So that pays for itself in terms of you think about what your hourly rate is, where you're at with, with your current job or not having a job. Just invest in Andy instead. It's a lot more fun and it's a lot better, at least it was for me. So Andy, you know I love you the most. Thank you so much, bye. Hi, I'm Kathleen Phillips, and I am in Andy's boot camp and the leadership program. I cannot say enough good things about Andy. I, I'm in love with Andy. I would not have been um, successful in my search and had all of the, the tools and the right words and language and techniques to use if it weren't for all of Andy's um, advice and coaching and encouragement. Um, I was just offered a job today and I'm super excited. Um, and I know it's really because of, of all the help that I got from Andy. There's really no other way to describe it. I watched so many videos and did the boot camp several times and I, I'm just in awe of all the great advice that Andy has and I am forever grateful for everything that he's done to help make my search successful and, and to um, be encouraging along the way because it really was a, a lonely and discouraging place to be looking for a job. but. Um, Andy got me through it and I'm super excited. I start my new job on Monday and uh, thank you Andy, you're the best and I wish you were here because I'd give you a big hug. So thanks again. Hi Andy, it's Vanessa. I wanted to take this opportunity to thank you so very much for the many ways that you've impacted my career path. It's about two years ago, I discovered your book Interview Intervention. I was at my reference library. I read it from front to back and knew I was instantly onto something. Then I went on the internet. I looked up this Andrew Lechevita guy and discovered it was you and the Mile Walk Academy. 
I subscribed to your YouTube page, started following your amazing weekly coaching sessions, and knew that I had to become a member. I had to deep dive and get more involved in transforming my life. You've had a huge impact on me in the most positive way. I don't know how to thank you other than to provide you with this testimonial to the wonderful ways in which you've supported me. And in closing, I'd just like to say, even though right now I'm a boot camper, which is an amazing program, the resources are indispensable, I should tell you that I'm probably going to become a member of your leadership program shortly as well. Thanks again for everything. Ah, uh, love those stories. Love those people. A lot of them, we continue to work together. I just, I just, I'd so appreciate them and anybody who would take the time out like yourself to join me here. I know your uh, attention is at a premium. Your time is at a premium. The fact that you would take some time out of your day, no matter what your situation is, to spend it with me, I genuinely appreciate it, which is why we're doing it all this week. All right. Let's, uh, let's get in and get rolling. I want to just make sure I got my fancy keypad here. Okay. Uh, everything's looking pretty good. Uh, team, I think all should be good. And I want to get in to the recap of the week, what's going on. And then we're going to go right into the talk, which is going to be about uh, just compensation in general. I think it's something that a lot of us could use a, a, a neat little checklist to, to handle. So what's been going on this week? If you're just joining us, you missed a whole lot. You missed four hours of coaching already. Uh, Monday, uh, two hours, we spent uh, about the first hour talking about uh, making sure you understand how to get what you want in life and some of the things that really trip us up some of the people that try to pull us off our path, how we sometimes can get off our path. Great session on Monday. The replay will be up. You can go back and visit it whenever you want. Uh, that was Monday. Then Tuesday, we talked about how to add resume power, or how to add power to your resume, how to add power to your interview stories, how to add power to your promotion discussions, how to keep the right kind of journal or diary or whatever you want to call it, as it relates to the key information and accomplishments that you are racking up throughout your life. Some of you are going to have to go back in time and, and pull that together, and now you've got a good formula going forward. Others, hopefully, are just starting their career, and you're, you're, you're now on the straight and narrow. Today, we're going to talk about compensation. I'll get into that in the full talk. Tomorrow, if you are interested, I have a premium coaching session with members of my job search coaching program. We, we endearingly call them boot campers because the program used to be called the job search boot camp because I did it boot camp style. And, um, and that's going to be a lot of fun. If you are in that program, we're going to be getting together tomorrow at 11 if, if central time. If you can't make it, you get the replay. Tomorrow's session is only for those members. We're actually going to do three live real-time uh, interactions, little case studies for you. I've got a lot of insight from members of the program who've actually submitted some of the main issues that they're encountering. I'm going to be speaking to some of those. You all seemingly have the same issues. And so we'll, we'll, we're going to knock out a bunch of those. Plus, we're going to have a hearty q and I would imagine that's going to be a lengthy session as well. And then on Friday, I'm meeting with my leadership coaching group group, uh, members of that program at 11 to discuss corporate culture. And as a bonus this week, if you are in my job coaching program, so job search coaching program, you can stop by for free as a little perk for getting into the program or being in the program. And as an extension of Community Appreciation Week, I thought it would be a nice invite. Okay, hear me live. Get in the chat, say hi, let me know who you are, let me know what you do, let me know what you need, let me know where you're from. If you're in one of those faraway lands, let me know what time it is. Put some question marks in front of your questions, because we are going to have a hearty Q&A today as well. And if you are in one of my programs, please let me know with your hashtag. Okay, Stacy, all that goes. And today, what's this all about? We're going to talk about how to collect the information that you have as it relates to your compensation. We lose sight of all the things that 
we would in one form or another uh, construe as compensation. Compensation is not always dollars and cents, right? There's things of value. What is that value that we have at the moment, this particular moment in time? Or if you are unemployed, what did you have most recently? So what are you quite used to earning in the way of value? So I want to let you know, as an executive recruiter, once I started Mile Walk, my executive search firm back in, at the end of 2004, I wanted to capture an, an understanding of the job candidates that I was recruiting on behalf of my clients, and I wanted to have a crystal clear picture of what it is they earned so that I could draw the conclusion early on whether I felt my client would be able to compensate them appropriately. So where a lot of you, you know, we struggle with as you go in on your own and an employer asks you, well, what, what do you expect in, you know, in the way of compensation or, or maybe what do you earn? Uh, you know, back, back when I started this whole process, it was not illegal in, in any states in the U.S. to ask what it was that you earned. And most employers required uh, not only your recent compensation, but even your prior two employers. So, so this was just, but this was my way of making sure that I was not going to invest a ton of my time trying to make this marriage between my client, the hiring company, and the job candidate who we were recruiting. Most of the candidates that we recruited were passive candidates. They were not looking for a job. We reached out to them. And so uh, more than 90% of them uh, were employed and most of them were happy. So, so this was very important that I understood this, but this is, this is something that all of you should have a complete handle on because I, I see how we start to rationalize as we get closer to making that change. You know, am I trading out something that might be better financially? And it, it becomes very, very difficult if you don't have complete control over what it is that you earn or how it is that you value it. So I want to give you this nice little checklist, much like the last couple days throughout this week, I've been giving you, you downloads. I've got I've got one today that we've been giving away for years called, you know, assess your current professional financial worth. So we're going to talk about what's in there. Now, some of you have the interview intervention book. At the moment that we're, we're doing this show, it will not for much longer, this book, I will send it to you anywhere in the world. If you chip in a few bucks for materials and handling, seven bucks, and I will send this book to you. It's a $29 book if you buy it on Amazon. And it's, uh, I'll give you the ebook. That's another nine bucks. I'll give you the audio book. You can't get that anywhere because I recorded it for you. Uh, and you get some other perks. But in this book, I go into one of the things that you need to do early on in the process when you're bringing yourself to market. But candidly, I would do this every year anyway, even if I was at the same employer is I would go through and take stock of what I currently earn. And I talk about some of what we're going to talk about today. I wrote about it in this book. So if you'd like to grab that, I'm sure that my team can drop that in the chat. Let's actually drop that in the chat and, uh, and grab it if you, if you don't have it. Now, I want to take a look at all the different parts of your compensation. And here again... Uh, you could take copious notes, but I'm going to give you the download, and, and all of what I'm saying is actually in the download, and I even give you a table of all of this stuff as well. But here's here's how I want you to look at this. Now, you might be thinking, well, Andy, okay, yeah, I, I, I need to know my salary. All right, it is actually a little surprising to me, and I, when I say it's a little surprising to me, I'm talking about, this is Andy on the phone with people, and when I say, okay, what's your salary? Not everybody knows. I would say eight out of 10 actually know what their salary is, but most of them can't even answer these additional questions that also give you context around your salary. So in the salary, it's part number one, what is it that I earn? Okay, well, what is it on an annual basis? What it, or an hourly wage or whatever it is, however you get paid, what is your salary? But what was the date of your last raise? So how long ago was your raise? See, here's what happens. People get into interviewing processes and then they realize, uh, even if up front they were talking with an employer and an employer says, well, what do you currently earn? And maybe you gave them that insight. And then, whoa, you get a raise. 
while you're actually interviewing. And now how sticky is it that you are now gonna have to go back and change your answer, so to speak. But you wanna have some context because if, it, if you, whether you're sharing this information or whether it's just for your own you know, sanity, you wanna have an idea. When was the last time I got a raise? When is the next time I, I am likely to get a raise? Do I anticipate one? So if, if you are in a position or a country or a situation where an employer can ask you that and you are gonna share your current wages, not that I would recommend that you do, but if, 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 if they're asking and it's a part of your pro, the natural process, you wanna make sure you're saying, well, I currently earn X, but I'm anticipating a raise soon, next month, next week, any day now. I'm getting promoted July 31st, whatever it might be. What was the amount? So what kind of leap did you make? Did you go from making 100,000 to 104,000? Did you go from making 100,000 to 120,000? Just have some context for yourself. Here again, you don't have to go sharing all of this information, but have some idea of what's actually happening. Are, is it, if you could move into a better situation, even if you're taking a $2,000 decrement in the salary, they're taking you down to 118, but you have all these other things that are awesome, wouldn't that be smarter if you really like all these other components and you're being put on a better trajectory? Right, these are things that we tend to lose sight of, okay? And then when is that next, when is that, um, sorry, what was the amount of the last raise and what was the amount of the next raise? So just have some idea. So there's not just what do I earn, but when was the last time that was bumped up? When's the next time it will be bumped up? And what was the amount of the last raise? And what was the, I, I think I might have, I, I, I don't know, I, I, I wrote these cards a while ago. Anyway, you get the idea on this stuff. And so it just gives you a nice clear picture of your salary. Now, this is the one that always makes me giggle a little bit. Now, I know a lot of you have bonuses, okay? And here's what I love. Well, Andy, I earn $150,000 and I have a $50,000 target bonus, so I earn $200,000 annually. So, okay, great. Did you get your bonus last year? No. What about the year before? No. So, you don't really earn $200,000 even though you think there's a possibility that you should earn $2,000. And in, it, it is amazing why people think that their compensation is actually their potential instead of what they actually earn. So get your bonus information, collect that. What's your target, what's the term? So if you're a salesperson, you might be on commissions and you might get a check every week, every month, every quarter, every you know semi-annually or whatever. Maybe you are a managerial resource or, or an, a resource that gets a a quarterly bonus based on corporate performance, personal team metric, personal and team metrics or whatever. But what's the term? Here again, well, I've got, I earn 100,000. I earn an additional 100,000 in bonuses at 25 a month. And it's looking like, right, I'm probably gonna get that bonus right at the end of June or at the end of July when it's paid out or whatever for the second quarter, something like that. So what's the term? When was the last date you received the bonus? When it, how much actually was it? Was it on target? How much was it in relation to what you expected, what you were targeted to earn? What's the next date that you're supposed to get the bonus? What is the amount that you actually anticipate? Do your best to take a guess. You might not have a clue, but either which way, at least think through this. This is amazing. Some of you have very complicated compensation structures. You should, you should notate these. I had the last, second to last job that I had, actually even both of them really, I had on the cash side of the equation, I had an annual salary like a lot of you. I had quarterly management by objective bonuses. These were discrete bonuses that were based on performance metrics and projects that I was doing and they that were evaluated every 90 days. I also had commissionable payouts every month for stuff that I was managing, sold, or did some other stuff for. So, so there was a lot of little numbers that were important that you needed to collect. So, so that's, that's really important. Now, this, this one can get really hairy. You've got stock or similar. Now, stock can be 
anything that makes you feel, makes you feel, makes you feel like an owner. Okay, now they might give you a restricted stock unit, which is like cash in hand once you are able to, to, uh, to, to, to sell it after it vests. There's incentive stock options. Those are a little different. There's profit interest units. So organizations might have profit interest units or phantom stock or other metrics where they create a stock pool of um, of, of basically of, of little fictitious stock certificates and they place a value on each of the individual units based on profit. And so, so based on how many of these you have, they might be giving you bonuses on a quarterly or an annual basis. So this is, an, this is something else that while maybe you're not a publicly traded company or you're not being bought up by another organization or whatever, but your profit interest unit could be, could be worth something. What is the vesting schedule? Have clear and clear control over what's, what's opening up for you and what that time frame is. There's all kinds of different vesting schedules. Some are very simple and you get 25% a year for four years. Others are you don't get anything for the first year, but after the first year you get 25% and then every quarter after that you get portions of the next 25% for that year and so on. But just have a clear understanding and then what is the actual projected value? Most of the negotiation help that I provide from a recruitment standpoint or from a coaching standpoint when I'm, I'm interacting with people in, uh, in, the, in the coaching program or folks in my one-on-one -on -one coaching program, we spend a lot of time trying to understand what the projected value is because based on what the projected value is, there might be signing bonuses or other buyouts, so to speak, of future value. So you want to make sure that you have this. And, and I cannot stress enough, although I've, I've tried in many, many videos, Everything is negotiable, but you've got to have command of what this is. And while your the projected value of your profit interest units is not of anybody's concern, you know, uh, as far as what you might be worth to them, but the rationale in, in your mind that you want to explain to them that this is something I'm considering. Now, you can or can't do it. I mean, you may or may not do something about it, but I want you to know that it's going on in my head. Right, so 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 employers will understand that, or maybe they'll maybe they'll delay your start date. Maybe they will maybe they will split the difference with you as far as what that's worth because they can't wait three months for it all to vest. But just make sure that you understand how these things work, okay? And then what your schedule is. Have command of it, please, because nothing is worse than you going into something and thinking, all right, that sounds good. You get down to the end, they give you an offer, and then you start putting, you know, you sharpen that pencil, put it to paper, and all of a sudden, you're thinking, uh-oh, hang on a second. I'm really leaving a lot of money on the table, and I don't want to do that. Okay, so that's another one. Now, I, I lumped uh, pro 401k and profit sharing together, but be clear on what... And, and companies do this a little differently, but, but a lot of them, the most common way to pay a profit share for most organizations, if you are in their profit sharing plan and trust, is they, they, they will deposit the profit share into the 401k account if you have that. So do you know, is there a match percentage? Is there a cap on the on the? on the percentage. What are you used to earning? A lot of companies will say, well, we'll give you a straight 6% of your salary. Some will say, we'll give you up to 6%, we'll give you 50 cents on the dollar. There's a number of different formulas, but make sure you're clear on what that amounts to and make sure you are clear depending on how it is allocated, if there's a vesting to it. Because it, depending on which, um, and this is very, very US centric, but you know, depending on where this is deposited, how it's deposited, if they have particular set distribution dates, if you need to be employed on a certain date to get your deposit uh, on an annual basis, and then how long that you need to leave it in order to vest, or whether you need to be employed in order for it to vest. There are many, many variations of this. This could be big bucks for some of you, because sometimes the, uh, an employer will deposit a profit-sharing distribution 
but then they won't, it won't vest for a number of years. If you leave, it takes what's, what's not been vested away from you. So this could be sizable, especially if you're a senior person. So make sure that you have, you have an understanding of what this is. If you do not know what this is or you do not know how your company does this, you need to get the details. Okay, this is, and by the way, all of these things that I'm saying, it, well, I, it goes without saying, but I'm saying anyway, you need to be thinking this when you're going into the, into the negotiation, meaning, hey, I'm looking at and I'm walking through your offer. I need to understand all of these things. So you see when, when an employer says to you, you know, hey, Henry, um, we, you know, we want to pay you 100000 How's that sound? Well, when you got all these things going on, how, how the heck are you going to know how that sounds? So make sure that you got that. Now we're getting to some, some, of these, some of these other ones that are a little... Um, you know, they're not unique at all, but they sometimes they're unique to companies, sometimes they're unique to positions. But there can be a lot of other flexible uh, pieces to your pie. So, you know, some of you might get cars, some of you might get car allowances, some of you might get phones and phone allowances, some of you might have flexible accounts. Uh, you know, in the U.S., we have health savings accounts, flexible spending accounts where employers will allow you to actually peel out some of your uh, dollars pre-tax in order to allocate them towards commutes and other things like that, health uh, uh, payments and, and uh, doctor bills and those kind of things. But what about training? You know, my, my, uh, my wife, her, uh, her son... Uh, was considering a move at one point some years back and he was looking at the compensation differences Now he's a super young guy and you know when he looked at it he said man they're paying about 19,000 a year for me to take these tests to gain these credentials in cybersecurity and storage and some of these other areas and that's that's meaningful stuff if, if one employer will pay for that and another employer isn't paying for that and you earn a hundred thousand and you're get kicking in another 20 for training that's pretty important that you would want to understand do these certifications do they make it make you more marketable might you want to make sure these are little things that you don't think about that all of a sudden when you get down to the end it starts to squeeze you so you want to have you want to have an understanding of what this looks like, okay? There's some other things. There's what I would call non-quantifiable perks. So flex, not flex spending, but flexibility. Do you work from home, right? Maybe you don't need the expensive clothes to go into the office. Maybe you don't have to pay the commutes. Maybe you don't have to pay the excessive parking, like if you you know drive into downtown Chicago, work from home, that kind of stuff. Maybe you travel. Maybe you love travel. Maybe you love traveling and you love seeing all the cities and you're racking up all the frequent flyer miles, right? That kind of stuff. Additional training opportunities. Maybe you just got a great boss that you're learning a ton from. Maybe that boss is taking you under, under his or her wing. Maybe there's some internal training programs that you really would like to take a part of. Maybe your company is paying for an executive coach. Who knows? Whatever it might be. But, but these are not necessarily dollars and cents immediately to your bottom line in the way of take-home pay, but these are certainly things that should add up value-wise. So make sure that you do that. Now, I got another, I got another one. Make sure, actually let's, uh, I'm gonna do seven. Uh, make sure that you understand if there are any repercussions. So sometimes you go and you get your MBA and you, the company will pay for it. And then you need to stay a certain amount of time. Like you got to stay two years after you take that class. And then every quarter that tax on another quarter. And if you should leave at any point, if you haven't made your two year window, you're going to owe us that education reimbursement back. Maybe there is signing bonuses that I gave you that if you do not stay, uh, past one year, you're going to have to pay it back. Maybe there is relo uh, fees that we've paid and expenses we've incurred, in which case if you leave within two years or one year or three years or whatever your terms were, you got to pay it back. You got to know this because when you go into, imagine you're going into a, a discussion with somebody and you are saying, uh, yeah, you know, 100000 that, that's in my range. Except that there's a $30,000 relocation expense that you're going to get hammered with if you move, right? So all of a sudden, 
you're, you're well out of bounds or you're going to have something penal that you're going to have to deal with or the hiring company is going to have to pay for it in order for you to get, get over there. This happens. We one time recruited a guy out of Atlanta who had relocated from a different state. I'm in the Chicagoland area. I was recruiting for one of the large food and beverage uh, companies and that guy who was probably a $300,000 a year resource uh, they had to pay his relo and his signing bonus back because he had been there less than a year. It costs another 50K and change on top, all up front. So they gave it to him so he could give it to them, right? And, and then we had to account for taxes on top of that. So, so, so these, are, these, are, these are realities. These can, uh, these can rack up. And then one other thing, and I just kind of threw this out, because this, this does happen. It's not a super common, but a number of these do. We once had a client, and you know this was kind of crazy, but uh, they worked in the capital market space, and they did technology consulting for financial firms, trading firms, and it was a casual bunch. They used to wear like jeans and T-shirts and shorts to work, and then she went from, she, actually she went from business casual to jeans and T-shirts, all the way to suits and ties and business attire for men and women and after years of not having that because she thought that by dressing up that she could charge more for, for, for their consulting fees. So she had to give them all money to go out and get thousands of dollars to go out and buy new clothes. She gave everybody who was there and anybody who came into the company an, a clothing stipend immediately. I mean, this is this stuff happens, right? It, have you been working out of your home and all of a sudden you're now going to go work for a new company where you got to buy new clothes? I would say, hey, I got to buy new clothes. I got to buy the kind of clothes I got to take to the cleaners. You know, is there any chance that I could, I could get a sign-on bonus or whatever? Gym memberships, other things like this, first class perks. I fly first class, international. What do you mean it's domestic, right? Like you want to know these things. I'm not saying you got to get all these things or that it, it like you got to go apples for apples because it rarely are you ever going to get in a situation where you're actually trading apples for apples. No, it is my experience that no two companies have the exact same pay structure. There's always little nuances, little differences in, in, in the comp. So just to recap this really quickly, make sure you got everything related to your salary. Make sure you have complete command of your bonus and your bonus targets, your terms, and all those things. Stock is very important. Make sure you understand what you have, when it vests, how much it's worth, if it's in the black, if it's in the red. You want to make sure that you understand your 401k and profit sharing allocations and distributions. You also want to make sure that any allowances uh, are accounted for, as well as are there any other things that you value that you, you can't necessarily put an exact dollar on? Watch the, watch the repayments and then kind of the catch-all. Is there anything else? All right, now I do have a sweet download where in this download, maybe Kara, maybe we could swap it out, um, swap the pin for them. But it, in this download, there's a write-up in here. I break down, you know, I don't even see this really well. I break down what this stuff is, what I talked about. It's great to accompany uh, with this talk, as well as I've given you, you know, kind of a table that you, I'm sure, cannot make out, but is is there. So I hope you enjoyed that. That's today's talk. Uh, if you're with me live, we're going to be going to the Q&A here in a minute. If you're watching me on the recording, I'll see you next week. So that was, I hope that was, you know, pretty comprehensive. It's something that. Uh, I think we all need to have our arms around as we, you know, as we as we go into even our promotions and understanding what it is that we that we earn. And if you didn't if you didn't get, you know, these were from the you know prior days. If you didn't get those, make sure to grab those. And if you don't have my little firstborn, make sure to grab that. And I think I want to. Let's see, what do we want to do here? I want to just go to the Q&A, and uh, I'm assuming that we are all good. Let me take a swing here. All right. Now, real quick, Community Appreciation Week, you know everything is on special. 
all the programs. I'm not going to go through all of them, but I did get some questions over the last couple of days uh, regarding the, the, the big program. And I just want to make a couple of remarks about that. But if you're interested in anything in the Mile Walk Academy, you can, you can check out the main page. All the prices that are good through Friday this week, they're all reflected in there. Most, most of them are right on the front page, and you can see exactly how much it's, uh, it, the, the enrollment fee is. And then if you click on the card, you can go in and get the details for, uh, for anything. Now, on the job search, I teach on, in two, uh, two areas, job searching, and I also teach in, on leadership, high performance and self-help. So, so, so the job searching and finding the dream job and all the assets, I have, there's well, basically five different programs that you can choose from. There's a big signature program called my job search coaching program, and then there's some point programs related to resume writing, interviewing, uh, there's a job search challenge that's really like the job searching mechanics. And then I have one that is a, a cross the board called my job search mini camp. But in, in, in the job search coaching program, I want to show you this really, uh, really quick that there are, there, I was getting some questions about is everything in the individual programs uh, in the big program, is it, there are subscriptions and all that good stuff. So I just want to let you know what that looks like. But just very quickly, the air you can check out tons of success stories, which I would encourage you to do. There's a page like this that you can see stories, video stories. You, you might have seen some of these in a, in a reel that I played earlier if you were here early. People from all over the world, from all walks of life, with different goals. You can, you can really check it out. I'm absolutely certain you will find your job search doppelganger on that page. But just so you know, this is broken down into five main modules and, and you get everything and you get it right away. You get all the tools and templates for every facet. You get it forever and you get ongoing support online support and live coaching support. We do these live group coaching sessions and this is one we have tomorrow. Uh, we did two in May, we did two in June, we did a bunch more the prior month. We're gonna have a bunch more in August and September and October and so on. So those are really group, those are premium coaching sessions that are only available to the members. And then it covers everything. So stuff we talked about on Monday is it, we go into much more nauseating detail. You, you, you might have seen the spreadsheet that I showed you, but all the tools related to finding your the right path for you, making sure you're in order, all that self-awareness stuff. We also have, I also have sessions in there that are will help you get on the right path even if you can't see kind of where the flag is out there. How do I know that what I'm doing isn't going to be wasted time? How do I figure that out? I go through all that. Marketing is everything related to resume writing, cover letters, LinkedIn profile. Job searching is everything related to bringing yourself to market. So how do I identify where to go? What do I say to people? How do I target them? How do I network? What do I do when they get back to me? How do I move things forward? All that good stuff. Working with recruiters, working with executive recruiters, and so on. Everything you need to know about interviewing. And negotiation is everything from start to finish. So everything you need to do from the moment you enter the process and what to say, what not to say, what to do, what not to do, every stage, because ultimately what you are trying to do is convince the employer what you're worth. And you don't do that in one discussion at the end or in a counter offer discussion that takes place after that. So it's, it's what you do along the way. I teach you all of that. If you want to look inside, we actually have a look inside. You can actually see inside the program. I showed you a little bit yesterday. Uh, there are great networking templates uh, for you to reach out to just about anybody. I've got a deep stuff in there for career changers. There's a module with the four stages and the 12 steps you need to go through. I also have stuff in there for executives and over 50-year-olds. 
Uh, you know, you'll always see what's coming up. We'll put out the schedule for the next few months here. There's different packages. Everything on this page right now is $497, but you can add coaching sessions with me or a resume review. And then we do have a limited number of VIP packages. We only have 10 slots that we ever make available because those people have direct email access to me. It, and I'm super, super fast on response time. There's some other things that they get. They get a coaching session. They get a resume review. They get the, the direct access. They get you know the career accelerator and so on. If you if you are a member, and I mention this you know throughout the week, if you have any of those programs that you know you're going to pay a hundred bucks for, or you paid three hundred bucks for, we'll apply that if they're job search related. So if you have the resume workshop or the interview intervention course or the mini camp or the jobs or channel if you have any of those um, we will we will uh, credit you and and you only owe the difference so there's a lot of good stuff I even put a frequently asked questions video there I won't go into all of that I just wanted to you know it's a really great program it's very very thorough and uh, and it's 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 just it's it's a great support group. So you get it forever, you get the ongoing support, you get the live coaching support. We have people in there that got came in years ago, got their jobs, COVID wiped out their jobs, they jumped right back into the program, they didn't have to pay anything, they can come to the coaching sessions, and bang, they got new jobs again. So we have people in there that are contractors, that, that every 6, 12 months they go and revisit some of the job searching tactics, some of the negotiation tactics. So it's really great. If you got any questions, support at malwalk.com. And then we also have all the leadership stuff, which I won't I won't go into all that. I would love you to take a look at it. That leadership program is a subscription unless you enroll for life. Uh, but I do have a monthly pass and an annual pass for that. That's everything to amp up your career and lead a fulfilling life. So everything from organization and productivity and relationship building and communication, uh, networking, uh, lifestyle and wellness. There's just all kinds of goodies in there, but everything is aimed at, at elevating your performance. So check, check that out as well. Let's go to uh, some questions. And how are we doing here? Unrepentant Drew messed up an interview today. Prepped for the wrong company. Interviewer told me she was contacting her other choices this week. Going to have me a second cup of coffee. <laughs> Hang in there, buddy. Hang in there. Adam Stark. Got a question? Um, do you need to sprinkle in the big eight achievements into your interview answers and stories? If so, do you have a to package them like the resume bullet layout, or do you just work into your stories? Okay, um, I'm not going to go into what all these big eight are that he's asking, but I have taught and I teach in my job search coaching program and in the resume writing workshop. I talk about the most important achievements employers care about. I alluded to a few of them yesterday where I was talking about you know, raising revenue, that's one of the big eight. Decreasing costs, that's one of the big eight, right? Uh, increasing market awareness, that's one of the big eight. Employee satisfaction, that's one of the big eight kind of thing. And, and there's, there's, there's a handful of others. And what, what, I'm, what I'm teaching you to do is that when you write a bullet, you want to be writing a bullet that addresses one of the big eight. So your bullets become much more powerful if you're talking about the achievements that they care the most about. So for example, you winning an award is cool, okay? But that doesn't tell me how you're going to add value to my company or give me a story that's easy for me to understand that you're going to add value in certain areas in my company. So you won the award. What's more important to me is why did you win the award? And if that award and what you did to win it coincides with behaviors and skills that align to one of the big eight achievements, that's cool. That's what you want to, that's what you want to portray. That's what you want to portray in your paperwork, in your resume. That's what you want to portray in your cover letter. And that's what you want to portray in your interview stories. Inter the big eight are topics. That's all they are. Write a bullet about this, tell a story about that. The mechanics of telling a story 
are all the things that I give you in the interviewing tactics. So if you're in the if you are in the job search coaching program, the boot camp, you have a whole module on how to tell stories. If you're in the mini camp, I've given you an abridged version. So the mini camp is the job search mini camp. So that's a lighter version and a less expensive version. And if you're not in one of those, then there are, is an interview playlist on my YouTube channel, which is free. And I would check that out. But that's how I would that's how I would look at that. Gary Hoover, what's a good word? Aylin, you're here up and early. Awesome. I was up and early today, running around the track like crazy, like a madman. Michael Moore, great to see you, my boot camper. Glad I'm not on the way. Oh, I know. Goodness. And Kara, and Jeff, and Celia. Oh, my boot camp was right there. I love it. And Carrie Freeman, a dedicated community member and as, as his baby girl. Hey, by the way, thank you to all of you who sent me LinkedIn invitations yesterday. I loved it. I read all your notes and I accepted everything. And if we are not connected on LinkedIn, please do so. So not don't just follow me. Connect with me so I can follow you and you could take advantage of my network. And I, I like to see, I always say this to you, that... You know, I love that you that you are following me if you are following me, but I like to be able to see but I like to be able to see what what you got going on and what your issues are, what you're commenting on, uh, what you need help with that 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 matters to me. That really does. And, and I get a lot of, you know, a lot of, of the source of what I teach you comes from the live shows like this and comes from the social media interactions that I have with you guys. And the stuff that, that the people, the premium members in the Mile Walk Academy communicate with me in the system or in the coaching sessions. So all good. Myron Grimes and Mom, great to see ya. Deidre, hey to you. And Jim, are, oh, you guys are just awesome. And Dennis, all right, Michael Moore. Monday you mentioned informational interviews. How do they work and fit my search? Why do that? Would I send a resume when scheduling or just attend with a just-in-case resume in hand? Okay, so Michael Moore, excellent question. I uh, So first thing is I only use the term informational interview because this community and people in the world use it. I don't believe that there is any such thing. I believe that if somebody is taking the time to meet with you and you are going to be talking about something related to their organization uh, or if you feel like I'm gathering information from you, that's an interview. Okay, there's nothing informational about it because you know you don't know if you're on the clock or when it's game time. I just assume everything is game time. Now, an informational interview tends to... Uh, be in a situation where there might not be a specific job that they're speaking with you about. Somebody might be open to meeting with you. Maybe you met with them. Sorry, maybe you targeted them through one of your cover letters. And I said, hey, Michael, uh, I don't really have an opening right now, but I'd be happy to have a quick call or a cup of coffee or a Zoom session with you or whatever. That could be construed as an informational interview, but if you reached out to me, you better be on your game, and while you don't have a job description in hand, so to speak, you should be ready to speak to how your skills and experiences matches to my products and services, right, or what you might be able to do for me. And in an informational interview, the most important tactic in the informational interview is to get me to talk before you talk, meaning... If I say to you, hey, tell me about you, you better not tell me about you. You need to kick it back to me and say, Andy, hey, this is great. Well, listen, there's, you know, I've been working a whole bunch of years. There's a ton I could tell you about me. Um, I'm so thrilled you, you took the time to connect with me. I'd love to know from you what, what your biggest challenges and issues are. And then I could give you, you know, my thoughts related to those and, 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 and my skills and experiences and how I might be able to help you with those or something like that. Because... It, it doesn't matter that you could do these 10 things. I might only need this one thing. And if you're talking about three of those other things, you're, you're, you're not going to have your, wi your wires are going to be crossed and you're not going to be hitting the bullseye. So the most important thing about an informational interview is that number one, you are selling to the gap that you need to extract from them. You can go into the process assuming that there are certain products and services and what they would need 
to support those and you could go into those informational interviews also with some assumptions about what their challenges might be and you get that those assumptions from your experience working with those kind of products and services. Hey, it's a real, like if, if somebody wanted to know, hey, well, what, what, what are some of the challenges for small companies related to this, these kind of coaching services, right? You, if you have experience supporting that, you should know the problems I have or likely have, right? That's what I'm talking about. So you wanna get the discussion centered on that stuff as fast as possible. And how might they fit your search? I don't, I wouldn't be, you know, uh, falling all over myself to try to get myself these. If somebody was open to having a discussion with me because I tried to reach out to them for something and they, they didn't have an opening or they weren't sure what to do with me or whatever, I would take the time to talk to them. And I would approach it that way. So how might they be useful for your search? Well, that person could it then could turn into a possibility where they would hire you or they could be a conduit to something else that they might refer you to. Hey, you know what? You sound like a great guy. You've got a lot of experiences. I got a friend over at this place down the block and maybe I can connect you to that kind of stuff. Should you have your resume with you? Yes, always. You just never know. So hope that hope that sheds some light there. Denisha, how are you? Sokoloff, 114, hey to you. Andrew Paleos, I received an offer yesterday. Annie, thank you so much. Very lowball offer, but I'm watching your content and asking questions. Thank you, Andy. You are welcome. Andrew, go to the video. Just go to the video. You'll be able to find it. Um, called uh, what to do, you know, the employer lowball, you know, when an employer gives you a lowball offer. Just search the just search the YouTube channel. Dennis, if they tell you that your salary expectations are a bit high, how can you argue that what you are asking in terms of salary is fair? Okay, great question. So, um, if they ask me something. And if they, if Dennis, you were interviewing me and you said, Andy, what's your salary expectations? I would say, Dennis, I don't have any salary expectations. Um, I, I don't know, you know exactly what you need me to do, what it's going to be like to work here, what you offer. And salary is only one component, right? That's the first, first, first round we're going to have. Then you're going to say to me, Andy, no, I really need to have an understanding because I'm a silly recruiter and I, I don't really want to waste my time if we can't afford you. In which case I'm going to say, no, no, really, it's okay. Let's proceed and see how it goes and I'll show you the value I can add and you'll show me the value you can add to my life and blah, 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 blah. Right, then that's the second round. Then the third round is going to be, no, Andy, I really need to know the salary expectations. Then I'm going to say to you, okay, I'll tell you what. Let's just, so we can get past this, do you have a budget in mind? You obviously have a budget in mind, otherwise you wouldn't be so, so persistent in trying to get you know, this from me when I know nothing about you, so what's your budget? Then hopefully you would tell me and then I would say, okay, let's move on. Okay, that's how I would, that's how I would do that. Now, if you fall into the trap and mistakenly give them a number and they say to you, your salary expectations are too high, my immediate thought, although this might not come out of my mouth is, well, how do you know? You don't know me, right? You don't know what I can do. So, so this, is, this is the silly cycle you're gonna get into. So if they say, well, your expectations are a bit high, say, okay, well, you asked me for a number. I'm open, I'm really open, why don't we proceed? And then what you're going to do is you're going to ignore all that stuff and you're going to be patient and you're going to work through the process and you're going to try to change their mindset about what you're worth and what they should pay for you to do that job that they initially thought they could hire somebody to pay and pay them less. Then it's up to you to decide, do you want to invest the time to go through and are you confident enough that you can convince them that you are worth more? But the reason you don't give salary expectation numbers is because this kind of stuff happens. So that's what I would do. I hope that helps. Allie Marie, Allie Marie, you have no idea how much better I slept last night knowing that we are now first degree connected. Um, I slept like a baby and it just it made me so happy. And, and phew, phew. all right, what do you got here? All right, recruiter said some jobs are remote, driven by team manager, just depends. Me, all it takes is one reorg to then not be remote. Don't consider it, 
another bank blah boot camper you are okay this is awesome awesome question my boot camper who we are now first degree connected um i'm always about the art of the possible and while i i i i know that this can happen i know the company can get bought up and everybody can be you know dismissed i know that reorging uh, around the office can can happen but here's what I would say to you if here's okay this is the way I'm wired it doesn't matter if I am interviewing with a manager who is reluctant to let his or her people work from home uh, I will be so awesome in the interview that I will convince that person that they should hire me anyway and still let me work from home that's the first thing. The second thing is when somebody says to you, well, some managers are okay with it and some managers are not, the great likelihood is some managers are not okay with it because they've been smoked by some of the people who aren't actually being effective working remotely or weren't working effectively remotely with, you know, during times of COVID or whatever. And I think it probably has more to do with the individual people than it does the individual managers. That would be my guess, especially if there's inconsistency across the organization because theoretically, culture-wise, okay, you can stop by Friday. Culture-wise, there should be uniformity in, in, in policies like that. So now you're, you're joining an organization that... In, on the one hand, is providing its managerial resources autonomy, which is great, except there's an inconsistency in the, in the policies, so they're not universally policy-oriented. So if it's me, you asked me a yes or no question. Do you, don't consider it. No, I would consider it, and I would go into it, and I would think I would be able to convince this person that I should be able to work remotely. And, and once you are embedded in there and you are doing such a great job, the rest of it takes care of itself. That's how I think. I, I don't know that we've had the full-on talk about... Um, how I approach every like for all of you guys, how I approach everything in my life. I always think I'm going to win. I don't ever think I'm going to lose. I'm either going to win or I'm going to look at it like I won. I'm going to look at it like I got the perspective I needed or the experience I needed. But no matter what happens, I'm going to I'm I'm always going to convince somebody that this is the way to do it. So, Ali, you got to go in thinking I'm going to win this my way. And yes, I understand that. You know, there's some inconsistencies there, but most people fail not because they couldn't succeed. It's they didn't plan to succeed. Okay, so so a lot of times, and this goes at a macro level and a micro level, businesses don't plan to succeed. So when they get to the step where they actually succeeded, they weren't ready to be there and then they falter and then they, they, they go out of business, right? Individuals get to spots in their lives and they didn't plan for success or how to handle it or what to do when they were going to hit these, these tiers along the way. But it's the same kind of thing for you. What boot campers, what the session that we have in your program that talks about how to handle multiple offers, that starts when? Before you started the interview process. We we plan for all the success because you're gonna get multiple offers. So how do you make sure that you don't fumble it when you've got multiple offers that you're juggling? That's why we plan for all that stuff. So you got to be thinking, whoever you are, whatever assets you have, whatever your experience is, that you are gonna win. That's the problem. If, you're, if you don't think you're going to win, that's a real problem. So that's how I would approach it. All right, hope that helped. Agent 99, Team Las Vida is, it is sunny, man. It is sunny in the Las Vida house every day. It really is. Deb, got your stuff. Deb, you're my lunchtime reading. You and Bryce, and if Dana is here, she better get her act together and get me her stuff. Ah, uh, and John Marks hated you, man. Dennis got a second one. And the second one, can you ask for a bonus if you apply to a company by yourself and not through a recruiter? Yes. Uh, let's say half of what an external recruiter might have. No. Dennis, here's what I want. You go for what you want. You ask for the whole kit and caboodle. Dennis, I don't know. Um, I don't I don't know. I don't know that you're in my programs, but you... 
if you, this is really important to you, um, and and if, if if you know money's no object, go into the coaching program, the big one. If 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 you need something a little more budget friendly, the job search mini camp is so good, and there's a whole case study that goes through everything about negotiation, salary negotiation. And it, it, it's, worth the, it's worth the $99 if you, if you need that kind of support. All right. Uh, <laughs> I'm not laughing at you, Dennis. I'm laughing at my team who's telling me that Dana stuff did come through, but it was in the junk folder. That's great. Uh, that's great. Okay, AMD City. Is the leadership program included with job search or are they separate programs? Actually, let me, let me, you know what? I, I didn't plan to, but this, I'm going to give me, give me the 60 seconds here. I think I've, I, I, I think, please, please indulge me. I hope I, I've earned it. All right. This is my leadership. This is my leadership program. And we meet, we meet once a month. This is about your career growth and your life. And there's a, there's a little video here, but there's also, I usually put a little video about what's coming up this month and so on. So this is like what's coming up tomorrow or, or I should say uh, Friday. This focuses on life, career development, and becoming a leader. And then to give you real specifics, this is lifestyle and wellness organization, success and high performance, you know, p- confidence, decision making, perseverance, risk management, all that stuff. Wellness about focus, habits, energy, all all of those kind of things. Communication and influence. This is about speaking, listening, communicating, uh, being persuasive, uh, handling difficult people. All of these sessions are in the program. Building relationships, and then much like the uh, job search coaching program, you can actually go in and look at what's included in the leadership archives. So this gives you, this isn't even all of it, but this is, this is a good idea of what's in there. So you can get a much, much greater uh, handle on that. And then if you, no, whether you're on the monthly package or the annual package, you get the career accelerator and you get the productivity course. And the goal setting masterclass is a gift for people on the annual membership. And if you want to learn about these programs, all you got to do is click that. And then, you know, that whole expression about double clicking, but it'll, it'll show you what's inside. So it's, I tried to be really consistent. And then if you want to see like, what it looks like in the library of assets you get you get these booklets that i create for you every um every session so there's a a really deep this one is about i think this one's on branding but we go you know you get all this 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 i mean these 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 i put some effort into this stuff every month to give you an idea and then we go through thought provokers so you can reflect on the session and then there's oftentimes there's a there's a challenge but you get the idea. And then we have, you know, the calendar, you can check that out. And then here's the different, here's the different options. So, you know, if you jump in on the annual, it's 297. If you jump in for the month, it's 49. If you're in the job search coaching program, the big one, I give you a discount. So that becomes $39 if you want. So it's really, we have a mobile app and all that good stuff. You can, you know, you can check that out. But these are, these are, um, they're completely separate uh, programs. However, the assets in the leadership coaching are always, they're going to help you with your job search. They're going to help you and have life, lo- uh, life lasting value in the things that I teach. And then that, that monthly meeting is, is even more interactive. I, uh, you know, hand, uh, you know, ha- handful or so, so of the people will get up on the camera, will interact with each other. Uh, as I teach, I take questions, some questions from the chat. I teach usually for 45 minutes to an hour. We have another hour of, of, of interacting, uh, which is really great. It's really great. So we literally meet like every four weeks. It's like clockwork and you get the, and you get the replays. So they're, they're separate. Now, this week only, if you are not in that program, but you are in my job search coaching program, I'm extending an invite to stop on by. So um, I just thought it was a nice perk to offer it. We're talking about culture, uh, corporate culture, and I'm diving deep into that stuff. So it'll be, it's going to be a lot of fun. It really is. 
Uh, here's a question. Deborah. yes, it is amazing. Thank you. Uh, is uh, Are the sessions usually scheduled on weekdays or weekends? So we normally schedule them on Fridays. Uh, we are, you know, we've tinkered with different times of the day and all that good stuff. But they're, they're usually 11, or 1, 11 a.m. or 1 p.m. Uh, usually. And uh, we have tinkered with the weekends. And if, if we're getting a ton of demand for that, uh, I don't have a problem with doing the stuff on the weekends. We just, you know, then, then most everybody complains. They're like, hey, I'd rather have them during the week or I'd rather watch the archives or whatever. That's all okay. We're never, we're never going to get it perfect, but um, the heat map, so to speak, of when most people are awake and when most people can attend, and we tried this because we, we used to have them on Wednesdays. Now we have them on Fridays, but it, it, it seems like it's a good day of the week at a good time, and, and it's, a, it's, really a lot of, it's really a lot of fun. It's really, really good, and if you're a bouquet, which you are, you should just try it for a month and poke around. I mean, it's really, really something. It's, it's, it's built up. Hey, look at that. And there you are. And Bob and Tony and Tom and Kurt. Oh, my God. You guys are awesome. Yes, thank you, Alan. I for, and thank you for keeping me honest. If you guys are loving this, man, click the little thummy thing. Uh, the, the, the like button, I should say. And, and please share it. Bob, how are you? And Hawkins Badge. Welcome. To the coaching program, I saw you jumped in today. Great to have you. Yes, you did just join. I just see I just see that now. And Ying from Shanghai. I love it. It's got to be middle of the night where you are. Or, or, or dang late. Sherry. What's the good word here? I know you recommend avoiding the ATS altogether. But for some roles, I've been applying online through the ATS as well as boss hunting and sending an email introducing myself and letting them know that I applied online, am interested in working for them, and asking that the, the uh, confirm receipt of my email and application. What are your thoughts on that? Sherry, candidly, uh, I would simply not put it in the ATS. I would go to the boss and I would see how they react. That's it. I would go with the boss hunting formula that I've given you, and I know you're in the boot camp, so uh, I wouldn't even waste my time putting it in the applicant tracking system. I really wouldn't, because the other thing is, I, I'm, I'm hoping, I, I assume they're going to get back to me, I assume we're going to win, right? So if they get back to me, then I can have, I've given you the template, the, I've given you the response to their response. If they say put it in the applicant tracking system, now you can have a dialogue around, okay, I will do that. Who's the recruiter I need to contact? Who's the HR person in charge of recruiting for this? Right? You, there's, a, there's a continuation that you want to have. If, um, if, if you said, can you confirm receipt of my email and application, I'm probably not going to do that. Okay, so if, if I, I, the only way I'm going to respond to you is if I actually want to talk to you. And then I'm either going to say, hey, Sherry, this is great. You know, I'm going to call the recruiter and we're going to line you up. Or go back and put it in the applicant tracking system, but you're going to say, "Well, I already did that." So it just it 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 it's it's what thinking moves ahead. What's going to give you more ways to continue the dialogue? If you if you go in both spots at the same time, you're not going to you're not going to have the luxury of the continuation. I think is effectively. So those are my thoughts on that. Bryce, you are a boot camper, and Bryce, you are my lunchtime reading after this. Uh, I've, got my, I've got my Bryce packet ready to go. Evan, how you doing, my man? Deborah Chapman, what do you got here? With Annie's guidance, equal feedback stated as phenomenal for three rounds of interviews. Call last night, schedule forced. Round, fourth round, last with VP on Friday. The session is pivotal today okay this is uh this is one of our beloved boot campers can we all send her some good juju uh i I'm, I'm i'm my fingers my toes are crossed harley and ginger's fingers and toes are crossed mrs la Civita is out at the lake somewhere you know when i die i have a pecking order of who i want to come back as my wife is first my dogs are second because being a la Civita dog is pretty good but uh we're all pulling for you all right. 
Aylin, when I find a job I'm quite interested in, I go all in. I'm wondering if my enthusiasm for a potential role that I feel is great fit is ending up as a turnoff for a potential employer. Do you have another? Okay. Okay. So you want me to comment. All right. The first thing is, can we all give her like a high 10 for that shirt and that coffee mug, which the coffee mug, which I sent her in the mail and the shirt like that I have of that, which she sent me. So we're twinsies. So you can tell this woman has a special place in my heart. Now, I think that um, I always feel like it's okay to be effusive with your enthusiasm and it's okay to share it. Uh, you know, you don't necessarily want to stand on the desk, but you know, I, I, I think that when I approach something, I want to be confident and enthused and you know, I'm, I, I will only be so eager to please and so eager to share that. So, you know, and as we, as we warm up, you know, and as we get to know each other a little better, then what I would do is I would express my interest that it has grown and I would substantiate specifically why. So, you know, this is so great. I know this is our second conversation. I was really excited after the first one, as I mentioned to you, because, and then, you know, what you shared with me today about such and such gets me even more excited about this opportunity. Right, something like that. You don't need to go on and on and on. You, uh, I'm sharing with you that this matters to me and it's important and I like it. And here's why I like it. And so you want to do that little bits as you go. Right? So, so for me, and it's hard to say with, you know, I mean, I wish I could sit there and monitor, you know, what was the exchange and what was happening. But, um, but as long as you, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. But I would I would do it in in a in, with the right level of balance. Rula, Rula, I hope you're enjoying that goal setting masterclass we gave you. Yes, yes, we did. And Double D, great to see you again. Yes, I am a pleaser, not a teaser. You know that. You know that. Michael Moore, I know you're a boot camper, man. Carrie Freeman, best seven bucks you ever spent. I'm telling you folks, read it and then give it away to somebody else or tell them to go grab one. Steven Tardes, how are you, buddy? And Johnny, Johnny Stevens in the house, man. Great to see you. Hey, where you been? Tom Phillips, a raise is when you get more money after being there a little while. I know some of, you guys, some of you guys are like, I haven't seen a raise in years, huh? Uh, you know, Agent 99, uh, my dog is supposed to be resting, no extensive walks and no jumping. So while I'm talking to you, you guys have no idea. He's jumping up on my little bench over there. And I, I actually right now he's behind me sleeping. And I almost stopped to get up to go to go get him and throw him in his crate. But I didn't want to I didn't want to do that. But he's feeling a little better. All right. Rula, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. That goal setting masterclass is 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 deep. It's very it's philosophical. There's psychology, there's prescription, there's the how to, there's the templates, there's the samples, there's the why you're going to fail, how not to and everything. I go through the whole thing. Vanessa, my new Instagram friend, how are you? Yes, you're in the mini camp. I moved to the to New York uh, City months before the shutdown. Been consulting, looking for full time job. How do I explain that in my cover letter and resume? So, um, one of the things that uh, you, you'll hear me say a lot is I don't love over explaining, and I don't know that you need to explain all that in a cover letter. So I. I would not try to explain that in a cover letter. I would be sending cover letter. I would try to boss hunt. You don't have to explain why you're out of work or any of that situation. And if, if the boss likes you and the credentials fit, then if you want to say, I ended up moving, we got shut down because of COVID, and right, I've been, I've been consulting since because I've been looking for something that I really love. That's it. I get that. That's all you'd have to say to me. And, and, and a couple other things, because this, this is coming up a lot. I want to say it again. I said it yesterday. I think I said it Monday too. And I'm going to say it tomorrow again 
for the people in the boot camp. With, with boss hunting, you got to remember, boss hunting is designed to work for you. When you hit somebody, they don't have to be the exact boss, but they, what, the skill you are bringing to them right now is what they need right now. That's why it works, right? You have something, you're a salesperson, you know how to sell products or services or this or that, and I need that. That's it. It does not work if you are career changing. It does not work if you're trying to break in you know, to new industries or, or wholesale role changes or whatever. It's okay if you have an employment gap. It's okay if you've been out of work. It's, it's, are the rec, do I have the requisite skills to support either that position or the types of positions that that company would have if there's not a publicized position. So some of you say, well, Annie, and I'm trying to change careers and I sent 15 boss hunting cover letters out and nobody's getting back to me. This, this tactic stinks. Well, that's not the tactic you use for you, right? So you, you, you wanna make sure that, now Vanessa, this has nothing to do with you. I'm just saying that for when you're reaching out to people, if you're gonna use that beloved technique, which I love the most, it's, it's about making sure that you have what they need. Otherwise, they're not gonna, like if you're gonna go through and explain why you wanna change and this and that, it ain't gonna, that technique isn't the one for you. There are other techniques for that. So anyway, so just, just try that. You do not need, Vanessa, you do not need to over explain that. Laura Cobb, how you doing? Great to see you. Negotiating makes me so damn nervous. No, don't, don't, don't be nervous. You've made it this far. No problems, right? You got this. John Marks, I'm, in, I'm a shipping and receiving associate. My company doesn't give out raises and I've been employed with them for two years. I should be moving on, correct? I'm going through your book. Okay, wait, wonderful question. It's a, it's a, it's, and John, I wish I could tell you. It, it's one of those questions where I, I can't, no one can tell you what to like no one could tell you what to do in this situation because you have all of these other things that you need to factor. As a coach, as your coach, and anybody who's done one-on-one -on -one sessions with me knows this, I will, I, I will not say to you, you should do this. It's, here's how I would think it through. Here's the components I would factor in. Then you go through the process, then you decide. If, if, if you love where you are, and you have stability, and you don't want to rock the boat, uh, so to speak. And you, you know, you got a kid that's going to college, and you need to make sure that everything is kind of steady, and you don't want to take on additional risk. You stay. If it's hey, I really don't feel appreciated, then what I would do is I would go to whoever I need to and ask them, is there a raise on the horizon ever? Like when would that be, and what would it take to get that, and all that good stuff, or how do I get promoted, and make sure that I'm I'm looking at it that way. If you really feel underappreciated and you want to bring yourself to market, then you do that. But all the factors that we deal with to make decisions, this is why, you know, I, I had that rant like several times about why personality tests and job interviews are a total joke because you can never simulate all the conditions that need to that act on you at a moment in time when you do something, say something. Uh, execute something and whatever. And as people evolve, number one, our personalities do change. And number two, the other thing is I might do something differently. I might make a choice differently if my sets of conditions upon which I am making that choice change. You know that whole, you guys always ask me about the Myers-Briggs stuff. There's a studies of people t take the test one week, five weeks later, they take it 50% of them score in a different quadrant. I have been eight of the different four part combinations of those things. Like, so, so, so when you, when any of you are considering something the, it isn't, don't listen to your friends that just say, John, you just, you know, two years without a raise, what are you thinking? You need to get out of there. Well, that's silly, right? You, what, what is it that you are factoring into your decision? And then after you make the decision, just be okay with it. You made the best decision you could at the time you made it with the information you had and how you were feeling. That's it. That's life. That's your whole life, right? So that's what I would say, John. I hope that helped in some small way. Seriously, because 
you got to do what you want to do and what you feel best doing. Yang, what do we got here? Yang from Shanghai. The fact that you are up and awake right now is just, is just, can, can we give Yang something? Yang, you know what? I, I, honest, I don't know if you're in my bouquet. Um, I, and I don't know if we have your vitals here. Can you do me a favor? Because you're up and awake. Can you email support at milewalk.com and just so we know who you are and then Kara's going to check your vitals and then we're going to give you some gifts, okay? I don't know what we're going to give you because I, I, I have a feeling you're in some of my programs but I will cook you up something. I'll cook you up something sweet. Just send me an email at support at milewalk.com. Say, Hi, I'm, I'm Ying. It's the middle of the night in Shanghai. And Andy said he's going to give me gifts. And then let's answer your question here. Is it, nor- is it normal practice that the company will request salary verification before they make an offer? For example, they will request a submit past salary slip to them. Okay. Interesting. Uh, Lee, enough. I, I'm not sure what you do. Uh, I'm not sure what your profession is. Depending on uh, what your profession is, some employers will make these requests. Let me give you a great example. Uh, from a recruitment standpoint, we would we would help organizations. We would recruit a lot of salespeople, and salespeople have a lot of very uh, variable pay. And when salespeople make claims like, "Well, I made you know four hundred seventy-eight thousand dollars last year." And I have a eighty thousand dollar base salary, and I mean they have this dialogue because they're using information to make counter offers related to, hey, I need you to give me signing bonuses and guaranteed uh, minimum draws with no, you know, no paybacks and these this, other things like this. A lot of times, companies will say, okay, show me your W two. Let me, I, I, I want to really understand this, and they might make a request. Some organizations will make these requests. And different countries do some different things. And even in the U.S., there were some organizations, usually uh, kind of old school ones, that would actually ask for payment verification. I don't get it. I don't understand it. I don't know why that makes one hill of beans a difference. Meaning, I think we should pay you based on uh, a combination of things. What value you're going to bring. How much do I value it? Meaning, you know, you may be worth that, but I don't have that money, or I don't think it's I don't think it's worth that, right? That's what you're trying to get at, and so I would just you know I I I, I think it's 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 not super common, it's not it's but it's not super rare either. So and it, it also depends on 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 who on what you do uh, professionally. So those are my thoughts on that, and let's get you some gifts. Stephen Tardis, I received a written offer today. Way to go, my boot camper, from a great target company. I like the company, but I'd like them to move a bit higher in their base. This is an AE role with base and uncapped commission. Stephen Tardis, if there's anything else you are asking me, okay, I would go to my, I'd go to the boot camp, go to module, the main boot camp, module five, main session. That's where you want to understand how to make the counter. And then I would also watch the job search mini camp, the one we literally just did. And session four, it's the case study with Rohan. It's, the, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a perfect way that you can go make your argument. That's what I would do there. You have those assets. I would, I would go there. I'm going to tell you the same things that's inside there, except you have all the details there. Laura Cobb, what's the good word? Yes, you have a whole bunch of letters after you, your name. You're like the whole alphabet. Seems so pretentious, yet people say to post it all. Zoom line, memos, emails, etc. I can see the first two. Not sure what you're asking me. Are you asking, Laura? Um, are you asking if you should actually put all those credentials uh, posted all on Zoom line. I, I, I would not. I would not post any of my credentials on my Zoom line if I was interviewing. If I was, if I was you running your business, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it either. I wouldn't do it either. Uh, I would have it on my website. You can, if you feels, if you feel that it's better to put it. Like on your LinkedIn profile, you could do that. I'm not. I'm not. 
I'm more about having that in like a little bio and you could you could have it up top in the bio, you know, well credentialed, you know, kind of and then list them. I I don't look at any of the letters ever when I'm when when we were recruiting. Do we if I have five year gap with the last position, I have that similar to target position. Five year gap at, from the last position to this current position, which is on plane. How do I adjust the reasonable salary? Calculate inflation, et cetera. I would not do any of that stuff. There, okay, so wait, so Dewey, this is not specific to you. This is a great question, by the way. This, this, this really is a great question. You're, you're, I, I know Dewey is, is trying to get a frame of reference. Like, I want to make sure that I'm taking into account time. But the fact of the matter is that it's very difficult to do that. And I will tell you that in two, 1999, I earned more money than I earned 20. At 2000, I earned more money than I earned like 20 years later, something like that. Like, it's not, life is not just linear. And, and it's not like salaries just automatically go up every year. Okay, they, they don't. And when you switch, it doesn't always mean you're going to get more. And it doesn't always mean you're going to get, you know, I mean, and, and, and what's especially um, typical is as we get in uh, the championship years of our careers, right, in the 40s, 50s, 60s, as, as we're getting further along, you know, there are a lot of people that, that can become unemployed that will take, will take steep pay cuts. And all that is going to be unique to your situation. My advice to you is I'm not even figuring about, I don't calculate any of that stuff. I go in and I make my best case for, for the number that I feel is appropriate based on the value I'm going to contribute and what it's going to be worth to them. And then I'm thinking about myself and what I need and where I need to be. Your job, Dewey, and everybody is not to think about the minimum you would take. Your job is to think about the number you want and then figure out how to make the argument that it is worth that, that you are worth that. I do not lower my prices thinking, oh, well, I'll lower them uh, in general because then more people will buy them. No, I try to figure out how do I price them at the right rate and then convince them that it's worth paying $5.97, $4.97, $9.97. Yeah, we're having Community Appreciation Week. That This is a sale. But it's not like these are everyday prices, right, kind of thing. It's the same thing for you with your salary. What's the number? How do you convince them that you're worth it, right? So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, you're going to pull your hair out of your head uh, if you're trying to figure out, you know, nickel for nickel. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even sweat it. Paul, how are you? Reviewing draft offer. Awesome. Yell, yell to me. Down, you're down the block, aren't you? Paul, you might be the closest living person in my community next to my wife. Congrats, my man. Uh, let me see. Just buzzing down. Karen, you can find the downloads in the YouTube channel, and that one might be in your program too. Andrew, I think we talked about that. Check the low check when the employer low balls your salary video. Rajid, uh, this is a great question. I want to know how to get my first job as a new graduate with no practical experience. If you are a new, because you are a new graduate, you obviously have a field of study. The field of study goes in direct alignment with a particular line of employment, or the field of study enables you to do certain lines of employment without knowing specifically what you are. Let me give you, I'll give you my life. I have a shiny electrical engineering degree that I never used. I got an electrical engineering degree, which enabled me to do a number of different types of jobs. I interviewed for technical sales positions. I interviewed um, for an engineering position, and I interviewed for an information technology consulting position. I took the information technology consulting position because my engineering background and my my good school, you know, career uh, enabled me to do that. Now, 
The, the important thing for you is to figure out what you're interested in, what you could leverage your degree to get, and you do not want to be chasing employers who are requiring the people they're hiring to have experience. Don't you don't want to do that. And I knew I knew I knew eventually I would have to pull this out. I haven't really been talking a lot about this lately, but this is this is this is what you this is the way you need to think. So Rajid. This resume send outs is where you should be spending all of you 90% of your time reaching out to people. You can use the boss hunting technique. You can use the no job opening cover letter. You can use whatever and you want to be sending it to people at your target companies because those target companies have positions that are for entry level people. Okay, you want to do a little research and figure out who is open to hiring somebody with no experience. Do not go banging your head trying to convince somebody who thinks they need somebody with experience that you can do the job. That's a waste of your time. That's what a lot of people do. They spend a lot of time trying to chase and chase and chase in these exchanges. And then they, they spend a lot of time hemming and hawing in here when you should be spending most of your time looking for opportunities. I have had recently... You know that VIP package that I showed you, the one for twenty five hundred bucks. Two two individuals, both twenty two years old. One was out of UCLA, and the other was out of Smith. Okay, one was a man, one was one was a a young a young man, one was a young lady. They were having all kinds of trouble getting their job. The minute they hit me, we got into the, they got the they bought they spent the money. They had more interviews than they know what to do with. They job offers they were trying to pick between. And because I said, stop doing all that stuff. Stop shoving your resume in that. Stop doing that. You're not allowed to do that anymore. And then here's what we're going to do. And trust me when I tell you, you got to know that those companies are open to hiring junior staff or people without experience. If you target those people though at those organizations this way, you're going to get interviews. And they did. And as a matter of fact, the the the, the young man from, from UCLA, he actually uh, was targeting um, organizations in the entertainment industry, but because he, he wanted to start working, he got a job at a bank. As soon as he got the job at the bank, the, 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 the responses were coming back from the entertainment industry because it, he was trying to do this during covid and so 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 there was you know there was there was responses that were coming a little delayed and then goldman sachs contacted him and it was just he he had all kinds of interviews and then it was a matter of well how now what do i do so so trust me when i tell you there are opportunities that are out there for you it's a matter of making sure you're taking the right strides at the right organizations that are open to hiring people like you i would say this exact same thing if you're a career changer if you're a career changer, don't try to fight with, with employers who think they need somebody who actually has that particular experience. And if you're competing against people who are younger than you, with more experience than you are, that earn less than you're used to making, you don't have a prayer. So don't do that. Stay at the top of the funnel. It only takes one, but you gotta, you gotta, you gotta be, you gotta be a marketing machine, so to speak. You gotta be sending, sending that stuff out to the right organizations. And if you're not sure, Send it, right? It, it's like, I don't know if they hire, that's okay, send it anyway. But just make notes that, you know, for those, those situations where you can discover those, um, you know, those organizations, that's what I would do. I wouldn't, I, if I was 22, I still wouldn't be putting my resume in an applicant tracking system. I really wouldn't. So I hope that helps. Uh, Hanyan, any discounts in the one-to-one -one coaching we can purchase during Community Appreciation Week? No, actually the rates are going up. Uh, all kidding aside, they 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 are. You got to remember when I when I am dedicating my time, um, that is it's it's actually hard to get all the people in uh, who need the help. So no no discounts on 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 the on the direct time. Deborah Chapman, what do we got here? Position is 100% work from home. I need to ask about working from the main home and vacation condo every couple months. How best to bring this up? This is super important, so I want to do it right. Need your help. Should I? Should this subject even matter if it's work from home? Uh, don't want to assume, and I think it should. I should ask before accepting or not. This is a fantastic question. Um, it's a, it's a quick it's a quick answer. It's a quick answer. So. It isn't working from home. It's working remotely. Okay? That's what you that's what you want to confirm and that's truly what it is. We call it WFH, 
right, working from home, but effectively it's, it's work from anywhere. Now, the only question, the only question is if something needs to be set up in your home for what you're doing that is so technologically advanced that you need to be in a particular location with particular secure lines and all this other stuff. I don't think it would matter if you, you know, you're out on the island, right? The Long Island, wherever the heck you're, you know, you are in that beautiful place up, up, up north, east. And so I don't think that matters. All right. So, but I would say, I would say, um, it, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I know this is 100% uh, working remotely. Uh, does it make any difference to you where I work from? I have multiple locations that I spend time in, and that's it. And then just get the response, right? It, and and but I'm telling you, unless they say, Deb, we're gonna come over with the team and the truck, and we're gonna drill holes in the walls and whatever, and set you up this way, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be okay. But it, it's okay to it's okay to ask it. I don't think it'll be a big deal. I really don't. And lots of luck. I'm really pull, I'm pulling for you. I'm pulling for you. Jules. Uh, please give an example of how to figure out compensation requirements when interviewing when currently an independent contractor with no benefits uh, want to compare full package. Okay, so, um, hey, let me just make sure this is all in order. All right, hang on, this is really good. All right, Jules, all right, I'm gonna give you some rules of thumb and that's, that's all they are, okay? So, Remember this, when you are an independent contractor, you get a wage. So you're likely earning a set amount, let's just say it's 100, okay? There's 2,080 workable hours in a year. That's if you worked every hour of every day during the work week, no time off, okay? So it's more or less, give or take. So that's 200,000. That's what you pocket as an independent contractor, Except that what the organization is not paying you is benefits, health care, right, vacation time, and so on. Now, if you want to do the fast math, you can say, all right, well, how much vacation time are you offering? Four weeks. Okay, that's 8%. 2% a week, right? 50 weeks, 52 weeks, give or take, right? 8%, that's eight grand. How much are you paying in healthcare? Well, we pay thousand a month for your premium, and you pay five hundred a month. It's fifteen thousand, right? You do the math. You know, it's twenty grand, whatever, right? So now it's another twenty grand. That's twenty eight grand. You're twenty eight percent over, and you haven't even got any administrative costs in here yet, right? So now you have to figure. Okay, well, am I am I okay with taking seventy bucks an hour? which yields 140 without the loaded rate, but I do get my time off, that makes the yield higher, right? That kind of stuff. And so you're just trying to figure out what's reasonable. Then you're also factoring in, what's the comfort worth? What's, what's the not having to renew my contract worth? Um, is there 401k match? Is there, right, like, add it all up. So it's not, it's like you can't tit for tat there's, there's nice things about being an employee. Hey, Jules, pay the parking. Hey, don't, you know, fly first class. Hey, right? like all that other stuff comes into play. But that's a pretty good, like what I just ran down there, that's a pretty good rule of thumb. And then what is, is there long-term LTI, long-term incentive plans? Are there other things that you, you've got to factor in? So that's how I would do that. So that's, that's really a great, so you, you do the math, like add it up. Lee Dollar, what's the good word? First of all, grateful for, buddy, I'm grateful for you, man. I'm grateful, you better put me on TV. You better put me on TV on the shows. Okay, did you ever share all your favorite books yesterday? Did I miss it? Um, I did, I did uh, share one, Love Me, you know what I'm reading right now? I love this book, this is a cute little book. Uh, Ikigai. Um, this is kind. It's kind of a cool little book. 
I, I love this. This one's right here. It's in my speed rack. Uh, I, 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 I read uh, at a pretty good clip. Uh, I showed the Daniel Gilbert video yesterday, Stumbling on Happiness. I think my favorite book of all time is um, you'll, you'll, uh, you'll See It When You Believe It by Wayne Dyer. That's got to be number one. I've read that book five times. I've given 50 of those books away. Like, I mean, that's just, that's just awesome. And I love all Wayne Dyer stuff. And I, I, um, I mean, what was, what's really funny is I gave away uh, like well over a thousand books. I was in a condo. I was in like a 1,700 square foot condo. I was a single guy. I had all these books. I, I didn't know where to put them. So my dad, I piled them up. Dad, you know, took a whole bunch of them to the, you know, to the to the used bookstore and gave them away practically. And you know, so I went all digital. And then I moved in this house and I had to start refilling the shelves again. And I, I just, I prefer, I, I went. You know, ebooks are fine, but I, I want to hold the damn thing because I'm writing all over them. I'm writing in the margins. I don't read a book that I don't have that I I don't read anything that I don't write in the book. So that's that ought to give you some kind of clue of the kind of stuff that I read. I just grabbed um, uh, what was the one? So I love the Greg McCune, the Essentialism, but I he's got a new book now, and I I think I just grabbed that one. I mean, I I've got a couple that are lined up here. That I'm going to be reading, but uh, yeah, I didn't. I didn't go through all my faves, but those are those are a couple that I that I really love. That I really love. Yes, Laura Cobb, you are a leader for life, and we will be sending you another message here in early next week about getting in the community platform. James Reed. When interviewing, how do you control the time, especially when you turn the questions around to interview the interviewer? This is hard when having short interviews. James, awesome question. Okay. Uh, the extreme point I will make is I don't worry about controlling the time. I don't care if I get to ask any questions. I really don't. I, I want to sell. Your, okay. Every time I prep a candidate for an interview, they get this talk. Your number one goal is to get them to love you. You do that by selling yourself. If you don't get a chance to ask any questions, don't you worry. You go to the next round. It, you know, because think about it this way. I, I want. I'm interviewing them too. Well, you are. Except that, as you go through the interviewing process, what's your goal to get the offer, right? If you go down to the end and you get the offer and you don't have all your questions answered, you just ask them until you get them all answered. You request more time to get whatever it is that you need uh, answered. What you don't want is you don't want to be worried about chewing up a ton of time asking your questions in the, in the interview process because if they don't love you, then they're just going to eject you prematurely from the process and it's, not, it's a moot point anyway. So that's the first way that I think about it. Second part is, okay, hang on. We want you to be prepped. I want you to have the interview questions. You go, because you're a boot camper, you go to the spreadsheet, the criteria questions matrix that you have in module one. That's where you laid out your requirements and the, and I gave you the, 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 the brief descriptions of what the requirements are. And then you, you have an ability to fill in your questions that you're gonna ask them. You can categorize your questions and you can rank them. And then based on who you're gonna be interviewing with, you sort your sheet based on what's important and what's appropriate for them. And then you sequence the, the way in which you would ask your questions based on time. Meaning, if I could only ask one question, that's the question I'm asking. If I can only ask two, I'm gonna ask this one. If I can only ask three, I'm gonna ask this one then, and so on. So I walk into an interview, and they're sequenced, they're ready to roll. So, hey, James, we only got five minutes left. I, I'm sorry, you know, but I was really interested in getting all that information. No problem, I know we only got five minutes. I wanna make sure of a couple things, right? And depending on where you are in the process, it's okay. If I heard you correctly, it sounds like this is what you need. I want to let you know that I match that because, and I want you to know I'm greatly interested. Do you have any reservations about hiring me? Right, like go into the close if you if you have to say, look, I have a ton of questions. Wait, I got a ton of questions. Here they are. I know we're not going to get through all of these, right? Okay, so in the absence of the additional time, here's what I want to ask you, right? Kind of thing, and so that's that's 
That's how I would go about that. And then I would be checking off my questions and filling in the insight based on what I was able to gather from whom I was able to gather it. And remember, go and say it again. I'm going to win. So I got a, I got a puzzle here. I got to fill in. I don't have to get every question asked in every interview. I get the entire interviewing process to ask all of my questions. And if I don't have enough time through the entire interviewing process, I'm going to get some of the bricks filled into that wall. But I'm going to have some gaps. Now, at the end of the process, they're going to say to me, Andy, we want to give you an offer. Are you receptive? I'm going to say, yes, I still have some questions, but let's not let that hold up the offer. Okay, but I would like some more time, and based on what I need to get answered, I need to speak to you, the recruiter. I have to go back to the hiring official for a couple more minutes, and it would be nice to talk to that whatever over there kind of thing. And then then, then you do it, and you do not email your questions, because I know you're going to ask me that. Don't email any questions. Hey, James, well, n- don't worry about it. I know we ran out of time. Email me your questions. Never email your questions, ever. Don't ever email any question ever that has anything to do with them responding to something that you need to know other than what time should I show up? Where do I need to go? When's he going to call me? That's it. Logistics. Why? Because there is absolutely no way that you can have an interactive dialogue through the email. Number two, they don't know why you're asking what you're asking. Number three, they can't hear how you're asking what you're asking or why it matters to you. And you don't have the chance to explain that. And they're only going, when they read something, they're going to read it and make assumptions that you want to know that based on why they would want to know that if they were you, which is incorrect. Okay? And the other thing, you're giving them a homework assignment, which you don't want to do. You're adding work to their pile. Right? Like, there is so many things so wrong with emailing your questions. Don't ever do this. Ever. Please. Say to them, you know what? I'd rather just set up some time whenever it's appropriate. I will be very respectful of your time, but there are certain things that I need. we need to talk about before I can accept that role kind of thing. Do not. Emailing is for logistics and thank yous. That's it. Okay, I know I, I, know I, I went on there, but like, don't. Please don't do that. Don't email ever. Don't. Don't. Say no. Okay, I think I beat that one up. Ingrid Giles, how are you? Hey, you received the Hiring Prophecies book. Awesome. I signed a whole bunch of those copies, but they're, right now they're only available to people in my leadership program. So that's another reason you can get in the leadership program. Oh, Never Split the Difference. I did read that. Uh, I won't read The Infinite Game. You know why. Awesome. Okay, wait. I've got a... Let me see here. Hold on. This is a good one. Melissa Griggs. Um, what advice would you give for... Re- and I, I want to I read this one out. Um, I want to I take this one because I think this is really good. What advice would you give for rebuilding confidence after a long search? Lack of confidence bleeds through in conversation and kills opportunities. Okay. Um, that's a great question and I know it's a problem for a lot of you. Uh, A lot of you have fear. A lot of you have, your confidence has been bruised. A lot of you are questioning your awesomeness because you are finding yourself in a job search for the first time and you're in your 50s and you'd never job searched and you never had this kind of trouble getting a job. You're wondering, does anybody love me? I get it. It's true. I'm not, you feel how you feel. That's another thing no one can ever tell you, right? What to like or how to feel. You feel how you feel. Now, as your coach, the most important thing for me is to help you get rid of that feeling if that feeling is having an adverse effect on your life and your performance. So whenever I think about anything, I, I always feel that our, our thoughts and our feelings are changed as a result of doing, okay, so, so, so what do I mean by that? Well, 
when we, when, okay, so, so what's done is done, right? I can't change that. But what happens is we spend a lot of time thinking about what's done and wallowing in it. And what does that do? Nothing. Makes you feel bad. Makes you feel worse. And then your mind goes off in all kinds of different, where, where, you're in thought mode right now, right? That's bad. I don't want you in thought mode. I want you in doing mode. Okay, so whenever you have fear issues, confidence issues, and all of all of those, there are ways to get rid of those. Now, just from a prescription standpoint, depending on what the fear is, you get rid of it differently. So, give me a couple. I'll give you a couple of really good examples. If the fear is um, I'm worried about how someone's going to react to me or how I'm going to look or something like that, and I'm not confident in doing something that I'm going to need to do over and over and over again. I'm reluctant to make a cold call. I'm reluctant to make a cold email. I'm a salesperson and I don't want to call people on the phone. I'd rather email them or whatever, right? Like fear, just those kind of things. Well, in those cases, you rep it over and over and over again. You over quota it. Meaning, if I say send three messages out a day, you're worried people are going to get, you know, be mean to you. Send twenty, and then send twenty the next day. And by the by the end of the second day, you will have no more fear. Literally, it will it'll be eradicated that quickly. If it's I don't want to make ten, you know, my ten quota cold calls a day, make a hundred. Right. As you do it, the doing itself will help you get over the fear. Okay, that's one way. The other thing is there's a big project that I have to take on. For many of you, the job search is a big project that you need to take on. I'm not sure where to start, right? In those cases, what's, what often happens is we, 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 get, we have fear or we're not confident because we can't see how it turns out. We don't know all the steps and we're not sure what to do. And that expression about trying to eat the elephant in one bite is very appropriate in this case. It's the same thing for me as a business owner. Geez, I don't I don't know how to run a big promotion to sell a $500 product to whatever. Okay, well, I didn't just know all that all right away. What's the first thing that I got to do? I got to figure out what the product's going to be. What do I want to teach on? How do I build that, right? How do I market it? How does that? So, so what you do is you break the, the big problem down one step at a time, and you only focus on the step and, and with visibility to the next few steps. So... I need to send, Annie said I have to find a target company. I can do that. Annie said I need to find a person in the, in the company. I can do that. Actually, he shows me how to do that. Annie says I need to send an email. Annie gives me the damn email. So right. So like, so like, what you do is, is you break it down into the small maneuvers. That's what's so good about the job search challenge and why it's designed to help you rebuild your confidence because you gotta fo- your focus has to stay narrow. History's done. That's gone. You need to be looking this way. So you want to focus on how do I do the next steps? So I have like a one action rule. What's the next thing I need to do? And, and, and I guarantee you, if you want to spend time in the past, the only thing you should be thinking about in your past is how awesome you are because you didn't get crap overnight right? Like you have a history of survival. You have a history of doing well. You have a history of good experience and a good career. You didn't get bad all of a sudden because you don't know how to job search, right? So in order to help you and to build your confidence, you have to be in motion, but you have to be in motion doing the right things. You could be in motion doing the wrong things, like sticking your, your resume into an applicant tracking system to make, make you feel worse, Right, so you got you got to learn the high value activities, and then you got to break them down into small steps. So, like I always use the example about writing a book. People do it every day. They get published every day, every Tuesday or whatever. Right. So, so well, okay. Well, I have to figure out what I need to write about, or I make an outline, or I got to set some time aside each day to write. I find a literary agent or whatever. These are one thing at a time that you need to do, and you can have a plan. But the 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 confidence is rebuilt in the doing. How do you build somebody's self-image and self-esteem? Right? You don't just say, hey, feel better about yourself. You say, no. Right? You, you, you make them do things that they are unable to do, but you get them to do it. And then after a little time, it becomes easier. And then you raise the level of difficulty and then you loop it again. That's what helps you rebuild and restore your confidence. It's in the doing, not in the thinking. So when you, when you, um, you know, one of the biggest things that we hear from people like in the coaching program that I showed you is how much more their confidence rose once they understood the blueprint 
And then they walked through it slowly. They took a step back when their confidence was bruised and they weren't sure and they were confused. And then they looked at the steps and they saw how they fit together. Then all of a sudden, it was like, oh my God, I got a map now, right? Okay, what's the first thing I need to do? Okay, let's get, let's get my requirements in order. Let's get my resume in order. It's one thing at a time. And believe me, I know you might think, well, geez, it sounds like it's a long process to go through. It's gonna be a hell of a lot faster going my way than your way. Right. So you got to you got to get some the right help to do the right steps. But at a minimum, if you're not going to get help from me, then you're going to need to figure out a way to break it down into bite sized steps that get you focused on the doing. And you need to look at and wring out the victory in the doing. And one other thing I would highly recommend for you, Melissa, if you have not seen it, 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 it I'm going to I don't say this a lot is a damn must watch is. Uh, a, a couple of weeks ago, I put out a video on the job search challenge, the advanced tactics. Okay, this is about are you actually considering what you're doing in the steps? So it's not just write the cover letter. Okay, if you're going to write the cover letter and you're going to send it to the boss, I need you thinking about the boss. I need you imagining what that boss is like. I need you thinking about what issues they might be facing. I need you to take your attention and your intention up a level. I need you to take your energy up a little bit. Like, these things will be life lasting. The shelf life of the lesson that you do, if you do the job search correctly, the experience will be more fruitful and the shelf life of that experience and what you're going to wring out of it is going to be a lot, a lot longer. And, it, and it's, it, it's in the daily movement. So where people really get screwed is when they feel frozen and they're wallowing in their thoughts. So, so, so as a way of getting out of that, it's, it's in the doing, and then one last thing I want to share on this, it's in, it's in the experience and the capturing of the right metric each day. So I have, a, I have a video out there about how to stay positive in your job search. And one of the reasons we get, we get real uh, bummed out about our job search is we're not focusing on the right, it's we're not focusing on interpreting what we're doing the right way. So how many applicant tracking system submissions you have is not a metric I want to track because it means nothing. It's Those are zeros. How many connections I'm making with people, how many messages I'm sending out to target companies and other things that you can actually control, those are metrics I want you focused on because I can't control their response. I can only control my output. So where your focus is and where your attention is has a lot to do with how you're feeling, your level of happiness and your level of confidence. Most of the time when we get when we have a lack of confidence, it's because we're focusing on the wrong things. So and we're worried about outcomes. You're paying a, a future debt today that you never, don't even have to pay. So these are some things that I would be thinking about. I know that was a mouthful, but the point is, if you didn't hear anything I said, it's you get out of the fear and you rebuild the confidence by the doing. So, I mean, it's we all go through it. We all have this in our in our in our lives. Something that I also have a video on how to overcome your fears, as well that you can you can check out. All those are on the YouTube channel. The Job Search Challenge, the Advanced Level Tactics. It's, it's something recent. It's it's um it's it's you all should watch that. If you have the job search challenge, um, it, it, I also put it in there as well, but, it, but along with the other premium videos. All right, I hope that helps. I know a lot of people, uh, a lot of people are, are in your boat and uh, it, you get out of it through the doing. Thinking never got anything done. Doing does. All right, where was I? Uh, you know what, Laura Cobb? Do you want my workout this morning? Well, but I, I got up this morning, b -ball. I went to the track. I ran two miles to warm up, and then I did 10 100-meter sprints, and then I did five quarter miles at like a 10K pace, and then five quarter miles at a 5K pace, and then five quarter miles at a one-mile pace, and then ran a couple miles and came home. Ah, uh, I wanted to vomit. That was this morning. I have another workout this afternoon. <sighs> D-City, is the leadership program included in the job search or are they separate programs? They are separate. That was, I think that might have been your question.
Please see y'all, I'm interested in a sales support position, but have no idea how to appropriately be in touch with them. I'm a newbie in the community. What would you recommend me to watch first before talking to them? If money is no object, get in the job search coaching program and that is your ticket and career insurance policy for life. Uh, if money is an object, I would get the job search mini camp. If you don't have any funds you want to allocate to invest in, in any programs, then what I would do is I would go watch my free job search challenge videos on my YouTube channel. That's what I would do. Paula Bishop, what's the good word? Job shadow. Yes. Javier, my wife is applying to a job that the posted pay range is well below what she is making now. It would be for peace of mind for her. How can she push for at least the top of the range? Javier, definitely watch my salary negotiation playlist. And well, first thing is, I would look at that job description and say, is that a job I want? And, and I understand maybe she just wants to get back to work or I'm not sure of what her entire situation is, but... It's in the salary negotiation playlist uh, from a negotiation standpoint, but honestly, most of what she most of what she needs is 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 in this book because if you do what's in this book, this is seven bucks. If you do what's in this book, um, this is what raises your value to them. This is how you show them how you're worth more, and then that makes having the discussion that much easier. So I hope that helps. And Sean, off to an interview now. Sean, you better crush this and make me proud because I know you had three interviews this week. Uh, so good, good luck to you. And let me see. Jennifer Gregory, tips on being open-minded in the job search, especially if you do not have a dream company or role in mind. Do you have or do have a top 50 list and exception expectations of must? And you're in order. You're in order, baby. Um, and you're and you're I you are now a mini camper. Okay, um, as as your your gift uh, from the other day. So that that's awesome. Uh, tips on being open minded. Yes, be open minded. That literally is the tip. You are the, you are doing what you should be doing. You're you're you targeted companies. That's open minded. You're investigating. That's open minded. You're sending your messages to them. That's being open minded because you don't know what's going to come out of that. That is being open minded. You by definition are being open minded. Allie Marie, situation biotech attorney, keeps pushing back meat. She is swamped. That's the angle. She needs to hire me. Ease the burden. How to get her attention now? She has no time. Keeps rescheduling. Allie Marie, you don't spend any time chasing her. You spend time up here. Go find somebody else. Wait, wait for her to get back to you. It will be. Remember this, people. All you salespeople, of which you all are now, you're marketing and salespeople, all body into one, if you're looking for a job, is, right, buyers buy on their time, not yours. Now, I have deadlines for you guys, like Friday, when everything else goes back to normal price. But that's only to make sure that I got your attention, because you got to know that, that that matters. But you buy on your time, not my time. Right? Same thing in an interviewing process. If she's not moving forward, it hasn't become so painful yet that she actually has to hire you. Don't worry about it. Go off and think about something else and she'll come back to you in her good time. Get that out of your head. The easiest way for you to, to get rid of that is more balls in the air, more bidders. So go, go feed the top of the funnel. All right, wait, I got two minutes left. All right, everything's on sale till Friday night. If you're interested in getting into the job search coaching program, we're meeting tomorrow. You know I'm going to send you an email in the morning, okay, tomorrow morning as a last call for getting to the show with me tomorrow. But the, the, the programs, all the programs, all of them, with the exception of the leadership program, are on special through Friday night. That's when the coupons expire. And then Kara's got to roll out of bed on Saturday morning and change all the stuff. So make sure you don't give her a headache and you buy it in advance. And, and you don't wait till the last minute, okay? And and, and, and and all my boot campers, I'm gonna see you tomorrow. And all my leaders, I'm gonna see you on Friday. But if you got any questions, support at mylewalk.com. I 
for you, all you that have been taking advantage of this free stuff this week, I am so, so glad we had this chance to spend the six hours together. And uh, you're going to see me next week. And we've got Job Scan uh, coming. I have, I have one of the editors of Job Scan coming uh, on the show. If, if you have any like burning questions about the Job Scan program, if you don't know what Job Scan is, just go Google it. But if, if you got any questions that you would love to get answered next week, I'm going to tell you, you can email support at milewalk.com. Don't worry, Carol will yell at me later because she's going to have to organize it all. But send the messages because if you got questions, uh, I want to make sure uh, that, we, that I have them organized because I'm going to interview her and then you will have an opportunity to ask her some questions. But I think we can get a lot of, of good stuff up through my interviewing of her and then, then I'll let you guys have at it and and uh, it'll be a fun show. And then the following Thursday, uh, we have HireVue. The CEO of HireVue is going to be coming on. And if you don't know what HireVue is, it's one of those one-way interviewing tools that companies are now using that I wish I could disinvent. But uh, Kevin Parker is going to come on the 29th. Jessica Nat's going to be here on the 22nd. If you got any questions about HireVue that you want to get answered, email those to support at milewalk.com. All right, 1 o'clock. I got to go read about my boot campers and have some lunch. Uh, I hope all of you guys enjoyed all the free stuff. Um, I just, I, I love you guys, man. All right, be cool. We'll see you soon.